Word of God. How many of you would give me five minutes today? Somebody, anybody? There's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Okay, we're good. All right, we're good. Uh, I promise to, to, to share and, and try to be prompt, but we want the moving of the Spirit here. Amen. And we're going to make make room for the Spirit. Amen. The psalmist writes here, and today I'm actually reading uh, NIV. And um, it says there in verse 1, I love you, Lord, my strength. You just pause right there. I love you, Lord, my strength. Is he your strength today? Amen. Is he your everything? Is he your all in all? Amen. I don't know where I'd be without him. Amen. I'm so grateful for the Lord. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield. The horn of my salvation, the, the word horn there, it's, it's symbolic of strength. The strength of my salvation, my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of, of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and I cried to my God. I love that. He just keeps putting my in there. Y'all catching that? It's personal with David. Amen. My God for help. And from his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came before him into his ears. And then I want to jump down to verse 29. It's such a beautiful psalm, the whole thing, but for time's sake, let's jump down to verse 29. With your help, I can advance, advance against a troop, and with my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, he is, his way is perfect, and the Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to preach a message today entitled, How Big is Your Rock? How Big is Your Rock? Can we pray today? Lord, we just ask you for your help today. We ask you for your anointing today. Lord, we understand that your anointing breaks bondage, that your anointing breaks every fetter, your anointing breaks every chain, and I'm asking you today to help me, Lord, to share your word. God, we pray today that the enemy, sometimes he comes in and, and it just seems like the cords of death have us ensnared, but I thank you, Lord, today that we can call out to you, and you're a big, big God. And nothing is too hard for you. And you're able to break chains today. I praise God for the testimonies that we've already heard today of how you are breaking off addiction. And I thank you, Lord, for that. And I pray today, God, if there be anyone today that is discouraged in this place, Lord, that they would leave here encouraged and that they would know that there is hope for them too. We ask these things. And we believe you, Father. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said... Amen, amen. How big is your rock? How big is the Lord in your life? Amen. I hope that that he's so big that he just eclipses. I don't know that. I'm from East Texas. Is that a word, eclipses? I don't know. that. I hope that he eclipses is your path or whatever your day looks like. You know, that. I don't know about you, but I can be going through the day and the Lord just gets in the way. <laughs> and I'm glad he does. Because if he doesn't, man, I'd trip up or I'd fall over myself or I would do something silly, right? But he gets in the way. And I'm so thankful that I serve a big, big God. And nothing is too hard for him. 
David says he's, he, here, he says, I love you, Lord. You are my strength. He says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God. He is my God in whom I take refuge. Can I encourage you just to take refuge in the Lord? The scripture says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous run into and they are safe. You and I can run to the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter where you're, at, where you're at in life. It doesn't matter how bad your day has been or maybe how bad your year has been. I've been through some like that. <laughs> My junior year in high school was pretty bad. Amen. <laughs> but I'm thankful that no matter what we face or what we go through, that our God is big enough and we can call out to Him. The name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous run into and they are saved. You know, it is important that we lift up Israel right now. Amen. But can I tell you that God is not shaken by that? He is sovereign. He is sovereign and He is in control. I mean, He is. I mean, I, I don't try to get political. You know, I really don't. But, but I, if, I, if I saw anything in 2016, the Lord has the last word. You know, He just kind of just stepped in and said, Oh, not yet. Some of you, you'll get there later. <laughs> but he did. He stepped in. He said, nope, not yet. And I, I'm, I'm here to tell you that I'm looking for Jesus to come. And we should be. And we should be praying for Israel. And we should be holding them up. But if the Lord decides to step in and say, hey, not yet. I've got a great revival still coming. Then I'm okay with that too. We're going to occupy until he comes. We're going to be about his business until he comes. Not my business, not, not, not what I want, but what the Lord wants. And hear me, I'm looking, I'm watching, I'm waiting, I'm praying. And I'm believing. My eyes are on Him. But we're going to be about His business. Amen. And I just love it that He says He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. Gentlemen, I'm so glad you're here today. I, I, if I could encourage you in any way. Have a personal relationship with the Lord. Amen. I, I thank you for your leadership. Praise God. These are awesome men. But you need to have a personal relationship with the Lord. That's what will get you through, man. That's what will get you through the tough times and the difficult times. Church family, I praise God for you. But you need to have a personal relationship with the Lord. I heard it said one time, God don't have any grandchildren. Man, I love my mom and dad. They were men and women. They were, he was a man and a woman that loved God passionately. He was a pastor for more than 45 years in the Assemblies God ranks. And he had a personal relationship with the Lord. But can I tell you, I don't get to go into heaven off of my dad's coattails. I have to have a personal relationship with the living God. And David had a personal relationship with the living God. He says, the Lord is my rock. He's my fortress. He's the one that I run to when things get difficult. I want to tell you today, you can run to Jesus. And he will be there for you. And he will encourage you. I remember, I believe it was Elijah. He says there in first, I believe it's first Kings 18, verse maybe 19. But he says, there was a great uh, wind that came, but the Lord wasn't in the wind. He said there was a great earthquake that, that, that happened, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. He said there was a great fire, but the Lord was not in that great fire. But he said that the Lord came up to me and he spoke to me in a still, small voice. The Lord was in the still, small voice. He's a personal God. He's an up-close and personal God. He doesn't mind getting in your business, church. I'm thankful that he don't mind getting in my business. Amen? I need him to get into my business. And he, and he comes up to Elijah and he says to him, because Elijah was having one of those days. He was having a bad day. <laughs> and he says to him in a still small voice, he says, Elijah.
And you know, sometimes we go through life and we're, we find ourselves in a place that we don't need to be in. But God's such an up close and personal God that he'll come and he'll get in your business and he'll say, hey, Ryan, man, I got something better for you. I've got good things for you. I, I desire to bless you. I desire to prosper you. What are you doing here? And he speaks to us in that still small voice. Oh, man, I love it when he shakes the earth. Glory to God. <laughs> he was shaking the earth this morning. Your singing was shaking the earth. It was awesome. Praise God. I love it. But sometimes he's not in that. Sometimes he's in that little still small voice. And he just comes up and he gets up close and he gets personal with us. I don't know about you, but I need it. <laughs> I need it. I don't hear as good as I used to. <laughs> Amen. Point number one today, if you're, if you're looking in your notes, the Lord is my rock. And he's a personal God. He's an up-close and personal God. I love what Isaiah says uh, in, in chapter 28, verse 16. Uh, and, and I love the word of God. Y you know what sets the word of God across from any other book? The word of God is prophetic. It's alive. Over and over and over, there's prophecies that are fulfilled in the Word of God. And Isaiah is moved upon by the Spirit, and he says here, So this is what the Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. Are you relying on the Lord today? I mean, is He your firm foundation? Is the Lord a tested cornerstone in your life? Amen. He is in my life. <laughs> I've put Him to the test numerous times, and He never has. He's never failed me yet, Brother Mike. Glory to God. He doesn't fail. And here's what I want to encourage you with. The ones who trust in Him, the ones who rely on the Lord, the ones who adhere to to the Lord will not be disturbed or give way to sudden panic. Sudden panic. You don't have to be moved or shaken when the devil roars. Sometimes he roars and he's loud. Can I just say he's just loud? That's okay. He can be as loud as he wants. Amen. Put your trust in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord. And stand firm upon this foundation. The Lord is my rock. Point number two. Jesus is that rock. Jesus is the rock. You know, there was a lot going on in the book of Acts. But in Acts chapter 3, there's an incredible story there. In Acts chapter 3. And there's a man, he's begging, if I remember correctly, he's begging for alms. And Peter says to him, hey, silver and gold we don't have, but what we do have, we give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and be healed. And he's healed, and so there's, there's this, um, there's kind of a chaos going on with the religious people. Not, not all the, the, the people that love God, because they're like, hey, praise God, man, this... But the religious people were upset because he did it in the name of Jesus. And so they're like, man, we gotta, we got to take care of this. And so they pull him aside. They, they throw him in the slammer for a night. And, and they pull, a, pull him aside. And they're questioning him then. And in Acts 4 and verse 10, Peter answers them. And he says, then know this. You and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you rejected, which has become the cornerstone. And then catch this, verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Jesus is the answer. He is the answer. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No one comes to the Father except by him. And Jesus is this rock. He is a chief 
cornerstone that we can stand upon. And then point number three today. Amen. And I think I think we got some guys here in a few moments that are going to help us out with an illustration. So you may want to kind of maybe get in place. Maybe they already are. But point number three is the rock a stumbling block or a stepping stone in your life? Read with me there. First Peter two, four through nine. As you came to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe the stone is precious, but to those who who do not believe the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Verse number 8, a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. Can I encourage you today? Don't trip over this stone, Jesus. But rather, can we just fall on the grace that he offers? Fall on the grace that he offers you. It is for you. It is for me. It is for your children. We got some men bringing in a stone right now. And I am so grateful for them. Gentlemen, can you sit it just right right, right there? It's good. That's good. Thank you. And I may have you come back in just a moment because I need some big, strong men to, to help me lift this stone. But, you know, this stone is it's pretty solid. Let's see if your pastor can get on it. Okay. Because it's not flat on the bottom. But, you know, this, this is a pretty big stone. I can stand on this stone. Amen. I want you to know that you can stand on the promises of God. You can stand on the rock of Jesus. Amen. The wise man built his house on the rock. And when the rains came, what happened? His house stood firm, right? But sometimes we don't build our house on the rock. We build it on shifting sand, on shaking sand. And what happened to that guy? It said the foolish man built his house on that sand, right? And when the rain came, when the storms of life came, what happened? That, that house, it fell flat, you know. Can I encourage you today to build your life on the rock, on the rock of Jesus? Uh, I have, happen to have a, uh, something else over here. I got a camp. Whoa. Pray, pray, pray for your pastor. And, and pray that the Cowboys don't play like I just did. <laughs> Come on now. I knew I'd get some. some. I have a can here today. Uh, the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Can I encourage you today that you can do all things through Christ in every season of your life? In the context of that verse, the Apostle Paul was saying, he said, he said, I've learned in the verses prior, he says, I, I've learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. You know, he was saying that I've had much and I've had little, but I've learned that in every state that I'm in, I can be content. And, and then he says, I can do all things through Christ. Who gives me strength? You know, it's it's interesting. Jesus says in John 15, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So it's important that we stay attached to the King of Kings, to the Lord, so that we can do all things through Christ. You know, we do have an enemy, though, right? And... He will come along 
he get his little spiritual marker out, and uh, he will do something like this. Let's see if you can see this. Now, I'm from East Texas, so I don't write very good, but, uh, you know, maybe you'll get the idea. He will do something like that. He'll put an apostrophe T on your can, and... Uh, You can't do that. Am I the only one that that ever happens to? You can't do that. Let's be honest with you. I'm praying up here one day and praying about this land that we have right here and just believing. Uh, we're believing God for a new building. It's going to take a miracle. Amen. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. But I'm praying one day and the devil just kind of just comes up and gets in my ear. You can't. Well, you know what? The truth is, is I can't do that. But he can. Amen? And, but, you know, it, it doesn't stop there. You know, he, he, he comes against us. You guys, I'll use you today. You can't break addiction. But, hey, amen, through Jesus Christ, I can break off addiction. Glory to God. Amen? No matter what you face. You know, what, well, you can't be faithful to the house of God. You got so much going on in your life and, and, and you can't be faithful. They know. He'll come with all different types of ways to trip us up and say you can't. But I want to tell you, yes, I can. You can. Through Jesus Christ, you can be faithful to God's house. Well, well, you can't be faithful in tithe and offering. Surely they don't expect you to give to the Lord's house. I want to tell you today, by the grace of God and with Jesus being the rock, yes, I can be faithful to give to the Lord's house. Amen. Well, you, you can't believe uh, that dream that God gave you 20 years ago uh, could, could come into fruition. How dare you have faith for that? No, you can believe for that. Amen. Can I encourage you that God is able to resurrect dreams today? He can resurrect. He re, God resurrected his own son. He can resurrect things that he has spoken over you. Sometimes the enemy will come against us and say, no, you can't believe for that. I'm here today to tell you, yes, you can in Jesus Christ. It is able. You can. You can. Now, now the problem is, let's see if this can. Oh, yeah. Here's the problem. The problem is, is our rock looks like this many times. David didn't say, the Lord is my pebble. <laughs> I'm going to put my trust in my pebble. No. He said, the Lord is my rock. Amen. Can I encourage you to have a big faith in a big God? He's able. He's able. The Lord is my rock. Mm, he's not my pebble. He's my rock. Amen. He's my rock. Mm. I I heard a story about a fisherman one time and uh, he was man, Larry, you'll love this. He was just he was just reeling them in, man, left and right, left and right. He kept throwing them back in. And his buddy's sitting there, he's like, Why do you keep throwing them back in? These are big old, you know, these are catches. And he looks at him, he says, They're too big for my frying pan. Get a bigger frying pan, right? Hey, grab a hold of a bigger faith. Grab a, well, let's see what happens to this. If I, I use this pebble against this can. Oh, yeah, no, it didn't do nothing to it. It swallows it up. Uh, some of us have a little bit bigger faith. Let's see if I can find it here. There it is. Looks more like this. That, that's pretty good, good size faith, but I, I, I really can't stand on it. And uh, yeah, you know, I, you know, sometimes uh, I'm gonna step on some toes, but uh, sometimes we pull Jesus out when it's when it's convenient for us. Oh man, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. Oh, and we'll pull him out. But when it's not convenient, uh oh, I'm putting that up. You know what I'm saying? And that kind of faith will do nothing to your cancer. Amen. 
we got to have a bigger faith than that. I can't be a, a believer on Sunday and then live like the devil on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, put Jesus back in my pocket. we got to have a little more faith than that. we got to have... <laughs> now, I know the Scripture says if you, if you have a, a faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to that rock, be thou removed. The problem is we don't have faith the size of a mustard seed. You know? So let, let's have faith. And let's make Jesus big in our life. Make him big in your life. It, so the enemy comes against you. You, you can't do that. And, and it's pretty good. But let's see what happens to it. Uh, it might knock it over for a while. But it, it's still there. It's still there. And I want to encourage you to have bigger faith than that. I want to ask you today, is there anything in your life that, that the enemy has been telling you you can't do that or you can't have that? Um, I, feel, I feel led this morning to say that, that God wants to restore relationships. God wants to restore relationships. He is in the uh, reconciliation business. He's a restorer. And the enemy would tell you, you can't have that relationship. And I want to tell you, he's a liar. You can have that relationship. And God can and he will restore that relationship. So if he's been telling you you can't have it, I want to tell you you can. Maybe there's other things that he's been telling you you can't have today. I want to tell you, yes, in the name of Jesus, I can have that. Whatever it is. Whatever it is you're believing for, in the name of Jesus, you can have it. In the name of Jesus. But you know, the greatest thing that God is most concerned about is He's concerned about your relationship with Him. He wants to restore your relationship with Him. And uh, sometimes the the, the devil will, will rob us and he'll trick us and he'll make us think that God does not want to have a relationship with you. He does. He loves you so much. He sent his one and only son to die on that cross for you and me. But not stay there, praise God. He rose three days later and he's alive and well and he lives in my heart. He lives in your heart. He abides. And so he's here today to restore that relationship with you. So I need I need my strong men. I need my strong men. Can who who are my strong men? Can y'all can y'all come back out of here and be careful because the enemy will say you can't. But I want y'all to lift that rock up together and maybe count together and, and then don't hit your feet. Because I I don't need to go back and be let me get out of the way. Y'all get pictures of this. <laughs> Uh, are we ready? Are we ready? We want to see what happens to that can. I want you to either, if you want to drop it or whatever, that's fine. But let's count to three, and let's see what happens to that can. All right, one, two, three. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, that, that was pretty good. Let's do it one more time. Oh, yeah, let's do it one more time. My goodness. Do it one more time. Watch your feet. Watch your feet. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There ain't nothing left. Uh-oh. Pastor, we're going we're gonna to have to get some new carpet. We <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it there, man. We'll just leave it there. Wow. Hey, that's what God wants to do to the camps in your life. That's what God wants to do. He completely wants to destroy them. And so you're here today, and God wants to encourage you today. He wants to strengthen you in your faith today. Um, the Lord put it on my heart some time back to open up, open up the altars and have a moment of prayer. Man, we believe in prayer here. We believe in, in, in letting go and letting God have his way. But remember, it's about a personal relationship and yes, I believe in coming around and praying for you, and I will. I'll, I'll pray with you, and I'll stand with you, and I'll agree with you. But God wants to have a personal 
relationship with you today. And so here in a moment, I'm going to open up the altars. And if you're here and you have anything that is keeping you from getting what God has for you, I just encourage you to come find a place to pray. Maybe if you're not able to get up here to the front, just turn right there in your seat and make an altar right there. Would you do that? Do we have some music this morning? Yeah, and thank you, brother. I, I want to, before you come, I want to make you aware. How many of you enjoyed Teen Challenge today? Praise God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> On your way out, there are there will be ushers back there. We want to receive an offering for them. And so today, as you're going out, would you please put something in the offering bucket as you're going on your way out? God's already told me what to put in. I'm going to do that as well. But would you please put something in the offering today? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to shut up and I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to invite you to come spend some time in prayer. If you're here today and you need special prayer for anything. After I've concluded praying by myself, I will gladly stand with you, and I'll pray, and I'll believe with you, all right? Would you please come and find a place to pray today? God bless you today.